What lets you think that that's more credible than other trash-talking terrorists around the world who have a lot of rhetoric because about the now, things they want to do but have no demonstrated capacity to attack us? Because they're the now the wealthiest, uh, most well-armed, uh, controlled territory the size of Indiana, and already some of these young people are coming back, particularly to European countries, and trying to orchestrate attack. All right, folks, joining us now is John Nagel, retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army, expert on counterinsurgency, current headmaster at the Haverford School in Haverford, PA, and the author of a great new book, Knife Fights, a memoir of modern war in theory and <clears throat> practice. And there it is up on the screen. Hello, John. Great to see you guys. Good, good to be with you. And, uh, you know, you get it, and you've got it uh, long before most people, and you you were there in the trenches in Iraq, and you realized what we'd be facing down the road after 9-11. And uh, so, so there's not many people better or more qualified, in my view, to ask about what happened yesterday than you when it comes to these lone wolf attacks. I mean, one man, as, as they say now it was, one man, you seeing what he did and what it's done, what it has done to Ottawa and the world, it's, it, it, it's frightening. Uh, and it's just the first of many, I'm afraid. So although it was a, a lone wolf actor, he was inspired by an, ide an ideology, a virulent ideology of hatred, a misinterpretation of the Koran of Islam. And that virus is spreading rapidly. It's being spread by the most dangerous terror threat on the world right now, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. And we've got to get a handle on this before we see a whole lot more of these. All right, let me ask you before we get to, to, to the Islamic State and, and uh, what's going on there, uh, is it the right philosophy? Because now we're learning that this Muslim convert uh, recently had his passport pulled by Canada because he had tried to uh, go overseas. He was designated as a high-risk traveler. Would it, would it not be better to do one of two things? And I know we're free societies in, in Canada and here. Either let him go, but don't let him back, or lock him up. I mean, to keep him here, <laughs> if he's a high-risk traveler, seems kind of loony. So I, I'm a big fan of Canada. I think that uh, like all countries, they are struggling with uh, a tradition of freedom and a, a, an expectation of responsibility from their citizens that, that all free societies rely upon. And a new threat that's being spread in a very unusual way. And the law enforcement and the homeland security mechanisms simply haven't caught up with how this ideology of hate is being spread and, and how attacks are being motivated by group, what, what it used to, it would require an assembly of people to plot this kind of attack. Now, one individual by himself connected to the internet can decide to make these choices. So I think this is just another indication of the fact that our laws and some of our philosophy is gonna to have to change as this long war against the radical Islamists continues. And on the part of this administration, I believe, our, our, our recognition of the enemy, our recognition of what drives them, our recognition of the problem. If we refuse to recognize it, if the Oklahoma beheading is a workplace violence case, according to our government, and, and Nadal Hassan to this day is workplace violence and not terrorism, then, then I don't see how we can accomplish what you just said we need to accomplish. And to me, at least, those are pretty clearly acts of terrorism inspired by the same radical jihad that inspired the Ottawa shooter. And, and this is a threat that isn't going to go away. It's being spread widely, and, and there are going to be copycat jihadis who, who follow in these same footsteps. This is a real threat that we're going to be dealing with for many, many years. Yeah, all right. Now, the, the, the fight against ISIS. Um, how are we doing over there? I mean, why are we having these, uh, until maybe recently, you know, four uh, air, air runs a day, four, four bombings a day. Now I'm hearing that uh, the goal isn't to take back the territory that ISIS won in Syria, but to prevent them from going further. I mean, who, what kind of strategy do we have? Do you approve of it? Well, I think the president has the objectives right. As, as he says, our objective is to defeat and ultimately to destroy ISIS. I think the, the way he wants to do that by relying on Iraqi forces, Kurdish forces, free Syrian forces is probably the right way to do it. I don't see committing tens of thousands of American troops to conduct ground combat. But the, the means he's providing to enable the Iraqis and the Kurds and the free Syrian army to, to take action, as you suggested, 
very insufficient airstrikes. We need to multiply the airstrikes by a factor of 10. Insufficient advisors on the ground. We need to multiply the current 1,400 or 1,500 advisors by a factor of 10. And we're currently holding those advisors back from the forward edge of the battle area. We need to push those advisors forward. They need to be calling in airstrikes, putting, putting fight into our Iraqi and our Kurdish allies. I'm very concerned about the timelines we're talking about of a year, more than a year, yeah. just to push ISIS out of Iraq. Yeah, it seems, it John, it seems John that, that he's throwing it in the lap of the next president. Listen, great great book. You're, you're a true American hero. Thanks for coming on, uh, John Nagel. We'll be back with uh, Peter Brooks. Don't go away.